astrophotography is all about signal to noise, which is stacking dozens, if not hundreds of photos on top of each other. But there's another piece to it. Astrophotography is photon collecting. And when you're imaging a target, you want to be able to get that image to where you're not blowing out the bright spots, but you're also able to image the dimmest of the target areas. And that is where proper exposure time comes in. So we're going to talk about how to look at your histogram and use that to determine exposure times. And we're also going to talk about a program that completely takes the guesswork out of it. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. So you have your target picked out. Now, how long do you expose it for? Now, it's important to understand there is a difference between integration time and exposure time. Integration time is going to be the total time spent between all of your exposures added together. And exposure time is going to be how long you're spending on each subframe. Now, astrophotography is all about signal to noise ratio and the longer the integration time you have the better the signal to noise ratio is so the longer integration the less noise and the more you bring out the fainter pieces of your target now how do you know how long to expose each subframe for to know that you need to understand the histogram and that's what we're going to be talking about today so if you haven't done so yet hit that subscribe button we got a lot of information to cover and uh, I don't want you to miss out on anything. And as always, I want to make this as easy as possible to understand so any skill level can grasp this and enjoy this amazing hobby. The good news is, is as easy as it is to overthink exposure time, it doesn't have to be complicated. All you have to do is just listen to what your histogram is telling you. And all a histogram is, is a graph that shows you how photons are interacting with your camera sensor. Now, in Nina, under the Statistics tab, you'll see this window, and this is your histogram. Now, unfortunately, I'm in cloud cover, so I can't show you this live. But I have this pulled up in PixInsight, a single exposure of M42, and this is a histogram. All you're looking for is the peak to be away from the left side. Now, you don't want it too far away, otherwise you're overexposing, and on the flip side, you don't want it smashed up against the left side because you're underexposing. You just want to have a definitive gap. So what you would do is you would take an exposure, see where your histogram is, and as long as this peak has a definitive gap between it and the left side of the histogram, you're good. Now, again, you don't want too much of a gap, and you don't want it pressed up against the left side like you see here. Now, there are a few things that affect this. Exposure time, gain, and offset. The more exposure time, the more right it goes. Less exposure, the more left it goes. The more gain, the more right. Less gain, more left. More offset, more right. Less, less offset, more left. Now, more gain, more noise. Less gain, less noise. And offset is simply an artificial value added to your pixels to move your histogram accordingly. Now, it's easy to clip data when you're adjusting your offset. And if you're using a higher gain and you're not getting as much integration time, you're going to have a noisy picture. This is where a lot of overthinking comes in and a lot of math. And I don't know about you, I don't like math. I can do math, I don't like it. So there is a program called SharpCat, and this program uh, has a feature which is called a smart histogram. Unfortunately, it's only available in the pro version. The good news is, is that the pro version, I think right now is 15 or 20 US dollars for a year, but it does all of the math for you. And how it works is something that we're going to go into in another video. There's a lot of information too much for this video, 
But just to kind of give you an idea, you would salute your target and you would put in how much integration time you're looking for for that night, five hours, 10 hours, whatever it is. And then you would uh, choose the uh, channel that you're measuring brightness on. This comes into play when you're using filters, like a dual narrowband filter. And you would choose the channel that you want it to measure in. And you would then hit measure. And it'll analyze the sky. And it'll take into account your maximum exposure time you want, the minimum exposure time you want. Noise limit, all of that, along with your total integration time. And it'll take into account and do the math for you to get the least noise for your final uh, image. And it'll spit out the optimal exposure time, the number of exposures you need. It'll spit out your optimal gain level. And this is a home run because this takes all of the guesswork out. So you don't have to figure out on your own how much gain you need versus exposure and all of that to have a good final image based off of your integration time that you have available to you. So we're going to go over this in another video. Once I have this done, I'm going to throw a link to it in the description of this video so you can easily find it. So check back. And um, that is pretty much it as far as um, what you're looking for in your histogram. So I hope you found this useful. Um, that channel icon that just popped up, do me a favor, hit that, subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any information. Throw a comment in the comment section. What are you struggling with with the exposure times? What questions do you have? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.